So, good afternoon. It is 1st of February 2024 and this is our video to actually uh, cover the new tranche, tranche two of the uh, UK 33rd Licensing Round Awards. I'm joined today by my very good friend and colleague, Colin Percival. Colin. It is to be here today, Mike, and we finally get to talk about the second tranche of awards, which has been some time coming. So I look well, forward to it. Yeah, it has been a little while. I think back in October uh, when we got the first tranche, and I think uh, today marks the 385th day since the round closed. So um, there's nothing like a speedy turnaround, is there? Uh, also, I'd like to. Uh, I'd also like to. Uh, acknowledge and thank um, my uh, colleague and also a good friend, um, Matthew Belshaw. Matthew is uh, behind the scenes, pulled a lot of this together, and uh, he's he's controlling all the technology and making it work. Cheers, Matthew. Hopefully. Don't let me down. <laughs> all righty. So I'm going to share my screen, and uh, we're going to just start by looking at, uh, well, the drip feed continues. We did say that uh, we'd come out with a video on the 2 p.m. on the day the awards were announced. Well, what happened yesterday? On the 31st of January, Tranche 2 was uh, awarded. Um, companies were advised in the morning, um, but the public statement was released after 2 p.m., so it wasn't possible. What we should have said in the first place was we're going to produce the video at the first 2 p.m. after the awards were announced, and hopefully that's going to be around about this time today, 1st of February 2024. So high level... Here's a quick look. We took, we know about the uh, the first tranche and the second tranche. I'm not going to go into this in, in great detail, um, but the numbers are there to look at. We can see that in the second tranche, um, 24 license awards, 74 blocks and part blocks. We understand that uh, most of these were sole applicants. There was very little, if, if any, competition for any of these uh, blocks. Uh, minimal work programs, a theme we're going to come back on. No firm or contingent wells were offered in the second tranche. Um, only two seismic acquisitions. And we, we actually think that these might be contingent. Uh, and in fact, one of them is uh, is only a 2D. So uh, pretty thin pickings overall. 17 operators. Now, they range in size from uh, super majors to, uh, to unfunded minnows. Now, um, if you include the uh, partners, there's 22 companies involved, plus 18 in, uh, in Trench 1. Again, only covering awards in the Central Northern North Sea and West of Shetlands. Why, do the, why the delay? Why has it taken so long? There are no meaningful work commitments in the second tranche. And uh, bear in mind, it was 12th of January 2023 when the awards were made. Colin, what do you make of it all at this sort of high level? It's interesting, isn't it? You know, we've, we've waited all this time and all the work programmes are into phase A, which is the minimum you can do uh, to get a new licence. So it's taken an awful long time. And I think as we go through, we'll see that during that period, some company's strategy has changed completely between, you know, making the application and actually being offered the acreage. And indeed, we think that uh, some companies simply will not be accepting their awards because they've moved on. They're in a different place. Over a year has gone by. It is a ridiculously long process. So um, we look again at the high level. Um, again, you know, we've said uh, tranche one uh, awarded 291 days after the round closed and tranche two, 384 days um, in total. We see that uh, there's been 51 out of 115. Now, well, why, why is there any uh, such a low number at this stage? Some of them we're still waiting for, obviously, the, the uh, third tranche, which will cover mainly Southern North Sea and East Irish Sea. Um, and we expect that to happen in a couple of months' time. So that will make up quite a bit of the gap. So we know that some companies' applications weren't accepted. So an application will not lead to award in certain instances. So if they didn't make, for example, financial hurdles? Absolutely, absolutely. If they, they committed to more than their finances would bear, then their application will not proceed. Okay. And uh, in terms of uh, 
blocks and park blocks, well, so far we've had uh, announced 138 out of the 258 applied for. Again, we may not get to that big number of 258 because some of the applications were, were knocked back. We've got uh, 24 unique operators across the two tranches, and um, we now know 28 of the uh, 76 total companies who applied. So, you know, in comp competitive blocks, uh, those companies who applied may not have been awarded anything, and uh, and so they'll be disappointed. But um, we we think that uh, there's still some ways to go with awaiting the Southern North Sea and Irish Sea. Now, moving on, some of the quotes. Now, I put this together. I take full blame for it, Colin. So, uh, you know, in the press release, the coverage, it said uh, environmental consideration were given precedence. Now, you know, really, there's no activities in Tranche 2. It's all desktop studies. There's no activity. Nothing is going to be done. So, uh, what, you know, that's uh, what, what do you think that means, environmental considerations were given precedence? Yeah, the environmental side has become more and more onerous with time. And we have to go through this uh, habitats assessment and it just takes longer, longer and longer. And, uh, you know, this, this tranche was um, pushed back uh, due to appropriate assessments. Um, we seem to have finally got there on the, on, with regard to that. And hopefully the third tranche won't be too long, probably a couple of months away. But, you know, it's a challenge because OPRED always take a worst case scenario and assume that every license goes full term to drilling and development, which as we know, never happens. It's utter nonsense. I mean, it's inappropriate. Perhaps this is coming from uh, what some EU uh, directive or regulation that was adopted, but really isn't apparent. And of course, at the time, these EU companies, well, they didn't care. I mean, they weren't footing the bill. Um, perhaps time to uh, to revisit some of this because most of these blocks in this uh, tranche two, they'll have the desktop studies. Uh, the companies will probably say, well, it's a bit small, it's a bit difficult, you know, lots of hairs on it. And so they'll relinquish and nothing further will ever be done. The license will uh, will end and uh, it's just been kind of a, a complete and utter waste of Opred's time. I right. agree, Mike. Um, you know, we are no longer in the EU. I know we're still beholden to them in terms of some legislation, but we're very, very similar to Norway now in our relationship with the EU and they have annual licensing rounds. So and in fact, we will have license. We will, licensing. we will too. <laughs> we'll come back on that. So uh, the, the second quote I picked on will help to ensure job security and provide benefits to the local and wider economy. Well, I can't see there being much um, much benefits uh, from, uh, f from the tranche two awards. A bunch of desktop studies, not really going to move the needle one little bit. Um, demonstrating the ongoing appetite within the, within industry to explore the UKCS. Um, well, it's a bit of a, a diet by the looks of things. There's there's not really a huge amount of appetite from industry uh, expressed in the, uh, the the work programs here. What 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 do you think? Yeah, and again, um, what we what we experience is a lot of acreage churn in, in terms of some of these applications of acreage that was taken away in the first place. Um, it would have been better to actually keep the acreage with the incumbents and progress it rather than having big gaps where people get taken away and then have to reapply for it. And and that, that whole thing just slows the process down. It, it adds years and years. Uh, it's very, very inefficient. Okay. Key part of the NSTA drive to support the oil and gas industry. Well, I don't see a huge amount of support. In fact, I see a lot of distraction with all the renewable responsibility and now hydrogen's been added as well as uh, um, the uh, carbon capture. I mean, lots of uh, being pulled in many, many different ways. Not the case when it was an oil and gas authority. So another quote here. Internal NSTA analysis shows the average time between licensing and first production is now close to five years, which means that licenses awarded now could be producing before the end of the decade. Maybe that could be the case with tranche one, but in tranche two, 
I don't think there's much much chance that any of these will um, will be coming forward for first production uh, within a five year window. Highly unlikely, highly improbable. What do you reckon? Well, they're all phase A. So, you know, the initial term on a phase A license is uh, up to six years. So already it's a bit of a challenge. Uh, sorry, and, you know, and, and phase A could be four years in itself. So you've got a little bit of a pro timing problem there already. Indeed. So, um, yeah, maybe uh, some food for thought there. Perhaps a little bit uh, rose-tinted glasses there from uh, the press release. And uh, let's just remind ourselves, this was from Upstream magazine back in uh, October the 7th of 2022. And they were reporting that, uh, well, NSTA said they were going to prioritise fast-track gas production in the latest UK licence round. And we've highlighted there, Authority would fast track applications for discoveries in the SNS and uh, could be producing gas in as little as 12 to 18 months. Did that happen, Colin? No, the licenses haven't even been awarded in 12 to 18 months. <laughs> so, you know, the, la the last area to be awarded will be the Southern North Sea. It's still a few months away. Um, yeah, it's gone from the front of the queue to the back of the queue. But we uh, we like to point these things out. There we go. So uh, what's left in the uh, to be announced in the 33rd? Well, we've talked about it here. Um, the remaining blocks, the majority, are in the Southern North Sea and the East Irish Sea. So there are others, are there? There will be a few others. Yeah. And, and they'll be areas. okay. And, and what? Why will they? Why are they held back? Do you think? It's all due to the appropriate assessment. So if if you're um, in an area that is subject to an appropriate assessment, which is mainly you know, proximity to uh, marine conservation zones or marine conservation areas, then, then you, you need the appropriate assessment finalised before they can be awarded. And we have got to the position now that the wording for that is in place, so that appropriate assessment will be completed shortly and the remaining blocks can then be offered. Which is good, which is good. But I mean, you know, Opred, you've known about this for 384 days. You're taking each of these assessments right the way through from from seismic acquisition, through drilling, through appraisal drilling, through um, putting it on production and right to the end of life and, and, and the potential uh, environmental impact of all of that. And it's not going to happen for the majority of these awards. There are already processes in place where when people want to go out and actually shoot seismic or drill a well or produce a field, these things are assessed at that time. So why does it have to happen for so long up front like this? Now, um, it's been going on for, for decades, you know. Um, yeah, does anybody remember? Yes, Minister. There we go. So um, the awards in detail... Pause the video if you want to have a look at that. We're moving on. And uh, Colin, West of Shetlands, what's been happening there? Yeah, just to refresh people's uh, memory, that, that uh, the previous awards, West of Shetlands, went to uh, two companies in the north there, you know, those light, light blue blocks, which was Shell, in a sort of big tranche of acreage there, and Athena with the four blocks to the southeast. And then this time round, we have uh, just to the southwest of those, we have Total and Shell taking out that tranche of acreage, and further southwest, Equinor taking out the, the acreage on the sort of southeastern side of Rosebank. So that's just protection acreage, obviously looking for things that could be tied back to a Rosebank, and uh, Shell have effectively, or Shell and Total have effectively taken out the extension of the Corona Ridge towards the northeast. So that runs all the way from uh, Rosebank. Uh, up towards the sort of yellow bits in the very northern part of the area there. That's great. Okay, and uh, the only, um, I mean, the, the Equinor um, have actually committed to a, a contingent seismic. So once they've done the studies, they kind of, um, they may elect to to drill a size, uh, to, sorry, to shoot a seismic or, or, or not. Um, but if they can justify, well, the prospectivity just doesn't look like it's there, then they won't go ahead and do it. So not really uh, many rich pickings here for the seismic companies. Is it worth no, as well just discussing the difference between obtaining and acquiring seismic? Because as you see there, Total have got firm to obtain seismic. 
So that isn't the yeah. same as acquiring, is it? No. Obtain yeah. means you will purchase existing seismic, and acquire means you will shoot new seismic. Uh, well, during phase A of a license, you can, which all these are, you can only purchase. You are not uh, given permission to shoot new seismic. So again, it questions why such a why such a long uh, a long winded environmental assessment when absolutely no activity will take place during phase A. And all what those all those blocks there that have been awarded, uh, pretty much covered by PGS spec seismic, the West of Shetland uh, visionary processing. Um, so there, there is a pre stack depth migration of modern vintage over most of that acreage. And the, the final comment I'll throw in there is that the, the grey blocks in there, they're uh, unlicensed blocks. And it kind of looks a little unusual, but then you've got to remember that it's uh, it's been, you know, quite some time. I mean, the, the round was, was announced in October of 2022. So since then, there have been relinquishments. Now, you know, this acreage now will remain... Um, effectively unlicensed, um, you know, nothing's going to happen in any of that area uh, until we start getting these annual licenses uh, up and running. So, um, which I think we, we expect, what, not in 2024, but in 2025. Well, hopefully they could be this year, Mike. I mean, once once that's uh, the bill is going through par Parliament, it's had its second reading. Once that's passed into law, then NSTA are obligated to essentially have a license round for at least one block every year. Oh, at least one block. Oh, dear. Well, that's we'd like to see... In, that's what's written in the legislation. <laughs> okay. Well, we hope it will be significantly more and, uh, you know, that uh, there will certainly have to be an acceleration. We won't be able to wait around for um, for OPRED and all the other... It's not just OPRED, as, as, um, as Malcolm pointed out. You know, he said... There's a whole bunch of consulted um, regulatory bodies, JNCC, and, and they're going to have to kind of have a, a process. Otherwise, um, you know, NSTA will, 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 not be, um, will not be actually following the letter of the law. Yeah, and I should say that, that with regard to the annual licensing, there will just be two climate tests. One, that domestic gas is, has less emissions than LNG. And the second one is basically, are we a net importer of oil and gas? And providing they're met, NSTA will be obligated to hold around every year. That sounds a, a, very, uh, a very sensible approach to assessing the impact. OK, um, let's move on. And... Um, Look at the Northern North Sea. So we'll work from uh, from top to bottom here. And uh, we've got NEO. Now, this is a couple of blocks here, or it looks like a full block and a part block there. And it's west of Magnus. Um, any thoughts on this one? Yeah. Um, having been in these blocks before, uh, 211.11a is basically a Brent play. So Middle Jurassic Brent, tilted full blocks, and there aren't many. And uh, as you go to the southern part of the block and into 16, you pick up the Magnus Sand. So I think that's what they're looking at. It's challenging, it's small, but they're looking for tiebacks to the Penguin FPSO, which is you know, a block and a half to the east. And, uh, but Magnus would be a lot closer. So if, if uh, the, these prospects possibly could be quite small and challenged um, to, to Magnus to is a lot closer being in the block next door with the platform yeah. being, you know, about a third of the way across that block. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, interesting. All righty, moving on down, and Equinor, they've uh, taken out uh, what, five um, five park blocks here in uh, the sort of the um, the middle of uh, the eastern part of quad, Quadrant 3. Yeah, interesting, because the main play in the area is still the Brent, but most of the Brent fault blocks have been drilled. Um, outside of that, there is potential in the tertiary. I think that's probably what they're looking at. Um, I know that PGS did a lot of work in the area a few years ago, looking for uh, amplitudes within the tertiary, and I suspect that that's what Equinor are looking at. 
a challenge. Sort of... um, there's a big yeah. series of client forms coming out from the East Shetland platform, which we used to call the, uh, the Nidhi and Delta, that come across this region. And I think they're looking for amplitudes in there. And the uh, the yellow blocks that are the license blocks, they uh, they contain like things like nuggets and uh, um, a series of fields that are, are tied back up to the to the north in there. Alrighty, uh, moving on swiftly to quadrant nine and Enquest have gone for um, nine one and nine two C. So uh, this is just to the to the west of their heavy oil um, interests. Yes, right. So it's immediately west of Kraken, obviously looking for some incremental volumes to tie back from Kraken. Um, be heavy, so oil. Would, heavy oil, and it would have to spill out of Kraken to kind of, you would imagine, to migrate into that block. Yeah, um, it could be challenging to get that oil to move very far. Um, but anyway, we uh, we wish them well. And uh, the far, the following one is. Uh, 918F. Now, um, you know, I'm familiar with this block and uh, I'll just go back to uh, change the screen over here. And we've we've kind of got information on all of these blocks in here. You can see we have a map showing where all the prospects are. This is in and around Nuggets and 4V and you can see further up. We, we split these out as we thought they may get awarded, recognizing um, our groupings uh, may change. So there's the there's the inquest. We do in fact see a couple of leads. We have the information here in our Trove database, and this is a map from uh, fr from the uh, D uh, uh, NSTA. Um, and here's the Apache block here. So just to show you on the on the the left hand screen there, you can see it's uh, to the to the west and northwest of of the Griffin field, just down to the uh, to the southwest of Beryl. And uh, you know we we see that there's five legacy wells on the block. We can see them on this small map um, uh, here, where you can actually see there's there's three wells that have had shows in them, but uh, no substantial discovery. And there's our entry from Trove for uh, for Griffin. So you're working in this area, you've got Trove. You just click on a button, all this information comes straight to your hand, and you know exactly what Griffin's consists of its stratigraphy, its maps, its structure, et cetera, et cetera. So um, we've got this for, for every block, uh, not not just the ones that have been awarded, but all the ones that were actually in the round. So um, get in touch if this would be of interest. So moving back, and that's pretty much covered the um, uh, the 918F. Did you want to say anything about that, uh, that particular Well, the interesting problem? thing there, Mike, is that you know in the time it's taken for the announcement to be made, you know, Apache have decided to exit the North Sea. So it'll be interesting to see whether they actually take up that offer of award there, because they're looking to get out of Forties and they're looking to get out of Beryl, and they're looking to get out of the North Sea. Yeah, and they've uh, stated that they will be uh, there will be no further drilling from uh, any of the fixed platforms. That they operate. There's, I think, seven across those uh, assets. So, um, yeah, that's a major, uh, major blow to um, to the future of, of UKCS with two very, very important fields um, that have contributed a heck of a lot of um, production over the decades. All righty, moving on. Um, now we're going to split the uh, the Central North Sea. I'm going to split it into the outer Murray Firth and then we'll move south from there. So if I start here, now you know this company here, Parkmead Group, don't you, Colin? Vaguely, yeah, vaguely. And I mean, it's interesting to see that they've gone back into what was, you know, traditionally called the Greater Perth area and picked up Lowlander and picked up Finn, which is a heavy oil accumulation. Um, so that's what they'll, they'll be looking at there. Lowlander, uh, Sour Crude Discovery. You know, Typically, 20,000 ppm H2S is going to be a real challenge. Indeed. And then um, Anasauri Hibiscus, uh, they've gone in with uh, in quad 15 here, uh, two part blocks, 1513C and 1518C. Yeah, obviously looking for, for things to tie into uh, sunflower and marigold, which are you know, under development. 
yeah so um you know protection acreage or potentially they do see some some upside but uh, yeah that uh, good luck with getting the uh, development there to um, to FID and making something happen now neo uh, 1527a and 1528a yeah and also that acreage just to the north that uh, mike 1522 and 23b um, yeah all, all in the sort of greater britannia area looking for tiebacks to britannia uh, variety of plays, but I'm sure they'll be focused on the, the Britannia sand, the Copervic, uh, which have been successful with elsewhere in terms of Finn Lagan and Leverett. They're you know, currently drilling. Indeed, indeed. Okay, and um, I'm going to move on uh, quick, quickly here to uh, 1622B. And uh, for this one, we'll uh, just have a look. Um, Again, you know, we've got all of these blocks here um, that we've talked about, showing all the all the prospects that are on here, and we're now talking about um, OMF. Uh, OMF, beg your pardon. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Matthew. Uh, so here's the Parkmead one, and here's Hibiscus, and this is the Neo ones we talked about, and uh, here we go, ENI. So you can see on this map here. We we recognise some prospects: Kendall, Bytham, the um, 1622 two discovery. Um, you know, it's uh, you know in this area, we've got um, various wells have been drilled. It's in and around the Burley field, and uh, we've got some entries in Trove for prospects and opportunities uh, within here. So um, lots of information. Uh, that we've collated in that region. All righty, moving back is there, well, um, we've kind of covered I was gonna, most Mike, of I've got a couple of comments on that on 1622. Um, it's essentially an extension of the Bray play, so the Upper Jurassic Bray play in the Hanging Wall and the Flag and Ground Spur. Uh, there's been a couple of tiddly little discoveries in there made by Total years ago, and E and I are chasing Bray prospect in the hanging wall of the flat and ground spur fault um, called Elgar. Okay, good, good, good. Um, and finally on this map, we've got uh, Ping Petroleum. And uh, this is uh, basically uh, acreage, uh, three part blocks in and around their um, Avalon um, developments or plan development. Um, protection acreage, looking to see if there's anything that, uh, you know, might be of interest to move forward. Worth noting as yeah. well that that paler blue block there awarded in tranche one was also awarded to Ping. That's a good point, yeah. So a more substantial work program in there. So Ping are going to be in all of these uh, these blocks in this quad 21 area. Colin? Yeah, yeah very much a um, series of blocks as protection acreage around Avalon, uh, which they're planning to develop in conjunction with a wind farm in the area, which will provide power the FPSO. Great. Okay. Now, all of the awards here in the tranche two, they're all basically just desktop studies in phase A. Nothing can actually happen in the region at all. So moving on, here's the Central North Sea, quite busy. Uh, we probably get our skates on here. Um, Harvester, um, interesting company. Probably applied for for quite a lot, and have only ended up with uh, with perhaps two opportunities here. One at the top of the page here, you can see 2212B, um, and then one at the bottom of the page here, 297B. So, um, what do we know of Harvester? They're very much focused on the uh, pivot tree development concept, where we have a, a small FPSO actually uh, tied into the wellhead, or essentially anchored by the wellhead. So their whole modus operandi will be to pick up small accumulations, sort of, you know, up to about five million barrels that no other technology can develop commercially. So that's what they've been focused on in this round. Australian-based company, um, yeah, with just these two awards in the Central North Sea. Well, we wish them well. I mean, there is this small gas condensate discovery. It's a uh, Phoenix. It's uh, 2212. I'm not sure the well number on that one, but it's um, basically it was made by Shell back in 2004. Um, 
yeah, is is that the one? Um, the block also contains, you know, a dry hole, part of the the, the jaws uh, dry hole. We have some prospects identified in here, but probably they're they're looking to see if they can move forward a discovery, that but one. could be quite quite challenged. Alrighty, and uh, the other block. Well, in the interest of time, we'll uh, anybody who wants that information, just uh, just get in touch. Um, <clears throat> So moving around, uh, so where should we start? The Dana blocks here in quadrants 22 and and 23. Um, this is coming what towards the uh, well, it's the Norwegian um, uh, boundary here and the Flatten Ground. I beg your pardon, the uh, Yaren High, mm -hmm. just off to the uh, to the east here. And uh, what Paleocene pinch out plays? Do you think? Absolutely. So there is a a small four-way dip closure there. Uh, discovery called Banks 2215 and uh, there's also a prospect that we used to call Ormel which is down at the southern part of that acreage and yeah the edge of the Fortis fan pretty much runs through those blocks so that's what they'll be looking for easterly pinch outs of the Fortis onto the year and high it'll all be about amplitudes and ADO response and uh, just to the south of that, we've got BP with uh, 2316D and, and uh, 2317, which is a, a tiny slither of a block uh, up to the, uh, the the median line with Norway. Yeah, and again, the pinch out will get a run through there. There's also a deeper play at the Ula Stroke, four mile level, which was uh, resulted in a very small discovery in Mortimer. Okay, good. Now, um, if we move across here to the southern end of quadrant uh, 21 um, and uh, 22, you can see Neo got uh, uh, a couple of part blocks in here, and uh, these are in the sort of, um, is it the Gannett area? Yeah, and again, looking for tiebacks to the infrastructure in that area. Okay, I mean, we do have a lot more detail, but in the interest of time, we should be moving on here quite quickly. Um, we can see that uh, the, I'm trying to see, Painted Wolf here have gone into this uh, this cruciform block here. They didn't get the bottom end of it, that went to uh, Dana, but they also got this extension over to the east. So you can see um, this series of uh, part blocks in here. And uh, these have been uh, awarded, studied, relinquished, awarded, studied, relinquished. Hasn't been a well in here for, for many a year, I think, but there are prospects recognised. Yeah, there's a bit of a departure for Painted Wharf. So, you know, to date, they've been totally Southern North Sea focused. But some of the people there do, as we know, do have a history of uh, holding licences in this area. It was uh, Actis, I think, was it? Um, yeah. Back in the day. Yeah, Actis with their biscuits prospects. All righty. Um, NS, NSNR, now, this is interesting. Now, um, you know, we know that the Devil's Hold Horse Well was drilling back in October of last year. It has ended, it's gone. Um, it's pretty widely known now that it was a dry hole and uh, the well wasn't tested. But, uh, you know, they've applied for um, acreage, protection acreage, and they applied for it, you know, probably, well, over a year ago. Now they've got a dry well. What do you think is going to happen? Probably not a lot, Mike. Um, you know, again, it's taken so long that between the application and the offer, they've tested their plan. It's been unsuccessful. It'll be interesting to see whether they actually take up that offer of award there. They did shoot a large 3D survey across the region. I think it was something like 1,400 square kilometres um, and hoped to drill a second well. But the rumour is that they spent all their money on the first well. Yeah, so um, we'll watch this space and see if that actually uh, does go to, uh, if the award is accepted in there. Now that leaves us with two blocks here. And uh, another departure, Deltic Energy spend uh, most of their time down in the Southern North Sea, but here they are acquiring acreage in the Central North Sea. And an interesting location for uh, 2224F, 2225E and 294B. And um, I'll go and have a look at those while we, uh, you make a comment there. There's 2924F. So uh, Tesla, um, that was a small discovery. A minor HPHT Triassic accumulation, um, 2228B8, 
1986 Shellwell, um, also on the block. So two discoveries, but um, this is uh, it, it's deep and hot and pretty challenging to uh, develop HPHT. Very much so. And I struggle to see Deltic being focused on a deeper potential. Very much more likely they'll be focused on shallower potential, Paleocene level, looking for amplitudes. Because, yeah, it's too expensive, particularly when you get down into the heart of the HPHD province to drill wells. And it's certainly not a small company game. OK. There we go, and this is the other deltic block. Um, it's of uh, these uh, these two blocks. Here. It's the uh, the eastern one, 29.4b. The um, the first block, the 29.3b, uh, it went to shell in in trench one, and we can see oh, there's a bell going off in the background, um, a very uh, very timely. And uh, you can see lots of prospects that we have all of these in our trove database, and uh, you can see this is the block that uh, that deltic are going for, and again. There was a small HPHT discovery here, gas condensate by Total Energies back in uh, 2015. Um, yeah, again, same applies. Probably not uh, not what uh, uh, the um, Delta will be uh, targeting, you suspect. Corf was in uh, the shell block in 293B. Thank you, Matthew. Yes, that's great. Um, and all sorts of, uh, there's the Corf. Uh, entry we have all the information on it again click of a button so we just pull it up and uh, here it is we just and this we plonk into uh, into excel any comments on uh, on this one well again i think it'd be shallow potential for uh for deltic um, yeah. as you pointed out it's hard the H hphd province you've got franklin on the right there you don't get much more over pressure than that and yeah the cost of those wells is horrific when it goes right. And if it goes wrong, um, <laughs> it's an absolute nightmare. Yeah, no, no. It's um, definitely uh, definitely one for the uh, the shallow play, we suspect. Um, I think we've covered most of them now. We're left with um, Orcadian here. And a great swathe of, uh, of acreage that uh, Steve Brown and, and Morris have gone for down here. Yeah, and I think they're focused on the shallow gas potential. So as you come out the central graben, these are all on the western platform, these blocks. So as you come out the central graben, um, obviously as you get heavy oil, which is what they're focused on, um, once you get out of the basin well onto the platform, then you see a lot of shallow gas around Zechstein salt swells and diapirs. Pretty obvious on the seismic and the sort of, sort of thing you could use for uh, in terms of fuel for heavy oil development. So I think that's what they're chasing there. And uh, lots of uh, lots of leads and uh, prospects that we see across this suede. So all of these cover that. So uh, you can pause the video if you want to see a uh, quick um, pre-award assessment. We did that, um, oh gosh, six months ago now. So anyway, that's, uh, and that really concludes. Have we missed anything out uh, that, um, oh, Shell, did we mention the 32E, 33C? No, we didn't, um, but they are just some blocks uh, that are adjacent to Jackdaw, which is being developed. So again, uh, protection acreage. Yeah, um, lots of wells in this block. And, next one, um, down. The next one, down. 2E and 3C. Thank you very much. Yeah, you see, keeping me honest again. Uh, two small part blocks. They lie south of Jackdaw and Blaine, east of Jade. Um, no legacy wells on block. Here, the uh, here's the two small blocks. Here, you can see just to the south of Blaine, and over to the east of, of Jade. We don't have any uh, prospects or leads identified um, within our trove database. Um, so obviously, Shell have seen something that looks um, of interest in there that they want to work up more, work up further. Um, we do we manage to get everything? Do we miss anything, Matthew? No, don't think so. Superb. All right, let's move on then. And uh, here's a here's a sort of the overview map that comes on the uh, NSTA website. Um, we uh, basically have thrown most of it away because, uh, of course, there's been no awards in the Southern North Sea or or uh, in the uh, the, uh, the Irish Sea as yet. So these are uh, these are all the blocks that have been awarded in Tranche One and Two. Now it's the light blue blocks were in Tranche One, and that's where really the substantial 
uh, or the more substantial work commitments uh, were made, and then entrenched to really nothing but studies and um, and uh, uh, several years of work before any any um, uh, activity might even be considered if they move into the uh, the second phase. Any comments, Colin, on uh, on what's going on there? No, you covered it, Mike. We just look forward to tranche three. Hopefully, not in the too distant future. Indeed, so. Um, pause the video if you want to have a look at the contacts at all these companies who were announced in the award today, and then our summary. So, tranche two, low work commitments. Tranche tranche one, much more meaningful. Um, fast track. Well, I think it's taken on a whole new definition. It's hardly uh, an endorsement of uh, the North Sea by industry, um, perhaps down to the sort of sapping regulation, windfall tax and kind of political indifference or at best half-hearted support. Um, you know, if we have to import oil and gas to meet our energy requirements in the future, it's going to have a much higher carbon footprint if it's coming from overseas. Um, we're wasting an opportunity to develop our indigenous supplies. Um, it's disappointing news for the supply chain, the seismic companies. There's next to nothing there, hardly going to be any uh, reprocessing opportunities, uh, unfortunately, Jagat. And um, drilling companies, well, no, it doesn't look like there's uh, very much activity going to come out of this uh, in the foreseeable future. Now, we are moving to these annual licensing rounds, second reading in Parliament, um, and there will need to be a seismic shift in performance. Um, will this be achieved, Colin? I expect annual licensing rounds will be achieved. So there is a will there to make it happen. Um, hopefully it will be in the format that, people, that companies make nominations uh, for inclusion in the round and that uh, NSTA and OPRED essentially prioritise those and we have a regular annual licensing regime similar to what they have in Norway, similar to the APA process in Norway. Here we're calling it awards, it's awards yeah. in nominated areas. Yeah. And the Netherlands uh, and to a lesser degree, I suppose, Denmark as well. Um, you know, again, you can, um, it's a far more... Uh, fit for purpose um, license regime and, and, and uh, an award process. So that's the summary. Um, it remains, me, uh, remains for me to thank uh, Colin, who, uh, as ever, his encyclopedic knowledge of uh, the UK and UKCS has, has been invaluable in this. To Matthew, who's kept me honest and um, yeah, gets me to talk to the right slide every now and again. Thanks, Matthew. And uh, Malcolm, who... Uh, uh, has been working in the background on this particular um, presentation. So um, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, give us a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, you'll be informed, and uh, we hope to see you back in the future. Is that okay, Colin? Excellent. Thanks, Mike. Bye. Take care. Cheers.